AFC wild card game. This is taken way up at the 25. And yeah, they'll be set up pretty nicely here as they have it up to the 35-yard line. they come up on first and ten. Here's Lance to throw it. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, Hey, we got our bike. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. On first down, Lance escaping the pressure right. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now Lance. It's caught. It's Miller. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Come on now, let's go. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. A big play that time on the catch and run. Well, things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone, this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. Now Lance again. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Touchdown, Texans! From 10 yards out, and the Texans will strike first here in this wild card matchup. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good, and that makes the score 7 0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. here back at the 23 yard line two yards the loss second and 12 nice play right there to stop him behind the line but i want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half yeah we know you know better than i he has the ability to take over a game so what do you do yeah i think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone and he's gonna go down the texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Hey, 
Throwing now is Carr. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Well, certainly not how he wanted to start his night. First throw of the game, an INT. Yeah, it's not easy, but he's got to try and wipe that one away from the memory banks. And let's face it, it's not often a quarterback and a defensive back have a lot in common. But one thing, because they have these individual-type plays, they've got to have short memories, don't they? DB gets beat, wipe it away, quarterback throws a pick, has to do the same thing. On first and ten, here's Lance. Rager catches it left side. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Thank goodness for heaters up here. And thank goodness I don't have to carry the football in this game. It's January. It's cold out there. Trying to clutch the football and absorb the hits. Not easily done. Yeah, we saw a product of the elements right there. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. We said it before the game, and I think it's still apparent. If these guys are going to advance in these playoffs, they're going to have to wreak some havoc coming off the edge. Yeah, wild card round. They told us the wild card could be that defensive pressure. They showed it there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And looking for Andrews, but this is intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. And we'll see if that pick six looms large as this game continues because we've seen plays like that alter a lot of playoff contests over the years. I would agree with that totally. And you often think to yourself, why do they alter it so much? Because after games, don't we hear coaches and players say, well, one play doesn't usually determine the outcome. But I don't think that's really true, do you? Because there's times when we see plays like that, and all of a sudden the momentum jumps to that team side, it deflates the other side, and they never pick it back up. And then things really go from there, don't they? That's the thing for me. We talk about momentum changes. A play like that is the ultimate momentum change. Offense ready to go for their next drive. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Brandon, there have been some memorable snow games for championships in the NFL. 1948. Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Cardinals. Well, the most famous one in my lifetime, I think, is got to be 0-1, right? Raiders, Patriots, just in the uh, Patriots to the Super Bowl. The tuck roll. tuck roll, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one people remember. But I also know this. In Miami, the infamous one, the snowplow game. In New England, when they went out there and, and the Patriots had a guy come out and clear a spot on the field for their field goal kicker to kick the game winner. Was that 82? That was 82. And the Dolphins fans will never forget it. Well, we're not seeing one of those famous games here, but it's fun to be in the snow nonetheless. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, 
I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And yeah, that will be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. So it looks like the offense isn't going anywhere. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. to throw his car. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. Touchdown, Bills. Mark Andrews, 42 yards. And the Bills have cut it to within a score. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. A fairly short kick from the 14. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Working from the gun, Lance. Eluding the pressure right, and he wisely will throw that one away. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Here's Lance. And he comes back with one complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered, and then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. Now a play fake. Lance. Open man. That's Noah Fant, the tight end. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. A gain of 13 yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. Again, they'll throw it with Lance. He'll get this complete to Rondale Moore. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him 
I don't think that was his primary target. No, I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. On play action, Lance. And incomplete. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Lance looks to throw again. He's to the 10. That is taken in by the tight end fan. And down to the seven-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the gun, it's Lance. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Lance going to throw. Forced out to his left. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. This is a big play in this wild card matchup, facing third and goal. Again, it's Lance. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Scotty Miller there to make the grab and the Texans will extend their lead the extra point up and good and it's now 21 to 7 Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And this not an easy situation. You're down early, in the elements, you're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? But well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. On second and seven, Carr. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. 
Picked off by Kenny Moore. And they will finally stop him as he's down to the 40-yard line. Well, it's a cold night, and whether you're a quarterback that wears a glove on his throwing hand or not, that ball is a rock, Brandon. You've got to really drive it through the cold and the wind, or it can take off on you. And that may have been what happened there. Off of play action, and here's Lance. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he's taken down inside the 30. Two minutes to play here in this first half of the NFL playoffs. Coming up at the half, we remind you that we're going to do what we've done all year. We'll get you down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown of what's going on here in this wild card weekend as we begin the road to the upcoming Super Bowl. Throwing on first down is Lance. And that's going to be incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. And Lance now to throw. Flushed out right. That'll be caught. It's Lager. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. That's a big league job there of getting out of the pocket, not panicking, and just buying himself some time. Then he made a good, accurate throw to set up first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Second down and goal, Lance. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Noah Fant there to make the grab and the Texans continue to pull the playoff surprise as they lead big here on the road and I believe they buzz down they're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half extra point right down the middle and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. As they'll take over with just under a minute left to play until the break. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Oh, and the defender took some liberties there with a late hit, roughing the passer. The league has done a great job of defining what is a late hit and illegal contact on a quarterback. The defenders really have to get in line. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. The cars throw into the hands of Andrews. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. It's so important to tackle well against these guys. But you and I both know that's easier said than done when the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy. And it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down, and it did right there. Carr now on first down. 
And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Partner, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting at 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Carr. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he'll be taken down at the 26. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Again, it's Carr. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. And the Texans scoop it. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. We've got plenty of weather here today. We've got some snow going on, and they've come out of a dome. And there have been two ways of getting ready for this. Some have said, don't worry about the weather. Just practice in your normal conditions and handle it on game day. And others have said, find some weather, find some conditions somewhere, and try and get ready. What do you think? Well, whatever the preparation there, the snow caught. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Bobby Wagner, what a play by him. That's a loss of 17. So we're at halftime of this AFC wild card matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Plenty of adjustments likely being made by both teams in their respective locker rooms to find out who advances to the divisional round. Let's get you back out to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Both teams try to avoid being one and done in these playoffs as we start the second half of this AFC wild card game. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And Charles, that had to be an interesting locker room at halftime. This is a team that's had so much success this year, haven't really had to deal with a lot of adversity at halftime, to be honest, but now here they are with their playoff lives on the line. And I think when you're alluding to that interesting locker room, you're just wondering, how are they handling that bit of adversity that they're seeing right now? Because I think this is a team that has to look to lean on the veterans at this point. We know we're better than this. We've proved it all season. Let them disseminate that confidence through the locker room. But this opening drive, it'll be an important one for them to give them a little jolt of confidence moving forward. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. The scoreboard tells the story for them a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make them really earn it. Throwing his car on third down. Throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. fourth down able to shake him off it's complete swings it out to his running back and he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there boy a curious decision to go for it doesn't pan out and the Texans take over an excellent field position so first and ten and if they score on this drive might have to start digging in our second half blowout material
Shotgun now for Lance. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. In this weather, any big play in the passing game, that's that's just a bonus, right? It certainly is, but oftentimes offenses think in clement weather plays to their advantage because you know where you're going on offense. Defenders have to react, and they often slip. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Lance looking to throw it. Touchdown! Noah Fant, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Texans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. The extra point up and good. And that'll increase their lead to 28. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Carr completes it. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long, but a nice throw there for a good gain and a first down. And he'll just get rid of it. So I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, Frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Third quarter, wild card round. Thanks for being along for the playoff ride with us. Here's second and 10. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. A big play there. 44 yards. And the Bills cut into that lead. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. 34 is the mic. 34 is the mic. He's cutting. Check in. 694. Let's go, hey. Go, Mike. Mike 34. Carr will look to throw. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. He's at the 50, 30, past the 20. And he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as head play backfires in a big way. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From the 10. And he returns this to the 22. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and 10. Here's Lance to throw it. He'll fire it deep for Rager. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 42.
But this offense, yeah, they keep wanting more and more and more, but they kind of got to be careful here, CD. I mean, we're still in the third quarter. This game isn't over yet. I would agree with you there because while they've had all kinds of success and hit on some deep balls like this, the one thing they can't do is start to get loose with the football. A lot of time left as you touchdown, Bills. Mark Andrews, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bills use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Look, we all know that sometimes we set up six in the wild card round. But I have to tell you, in this case, I did not see that coming. I don't think anyone in the stadium saw it coming. You and I were coming in before the game. There was a couple in front of us talking about travel plans for next weekend. They might want to cancel those. Yeah, I would say so because right now it's looking more and more like they're going to be one and done. They're probably trying to call the hotel and make sure they get their security deposit back. Set now to kick this one away and off it goes. This is taken just shy of the 10. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and that'll make it second down. To throw, it's Lance. His throw incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end, and it's third and short. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Lance looking to throw on third and two. Got a man complete to Miller. The 20. Touchdown, Houston. And boy, CD, it's one thing to watch a great run, but when it's a great run with broken contact, it's like a cherry on top. That was a nice play. No problem there on the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Shotgun now for Carr. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Carr going to throw. And that'll be incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time, but it'll be second down. Hey, 
They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And he will find his man, Samuel. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. We're in the third quarter in upstate New York with a second and ten. Now Carr. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. One quarter remains for the right to survive round one here in the AFC. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Do you think after that last run, they're thinking to themselves, we had to wait all day to play this night game, and we're still not able to run the ball the way we want to? Yeah, this defense, they've risen to the challenge all evening long. They'll try again. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop it behind the line. That second down play nets a minus four. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame whooping has turned into results. Carr now on third and goal. Touchdown! That's Carr. Michael Cookman, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bills get a bit closer. After another passing touchdown, I don't think it'd be an understatement to say that he's in the zone, and I believe he likes it. So now here's Derek Carr leading his guys up to go for two. They'll try and throw for it. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone, and that cuts the lead a bit further. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is, and I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now. When I talk with coaches and when we sit with them, they always talk about they actually have two-point periods in practice now, something they never really did before. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and 10. Hands it off out of the gun. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. From the 44, Lance. Throwing for his running back, and he's got it complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A big play there on the catch and run. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They are certainly not letting up on the pressure in this one, and oftentimes you hear this expression, all gas, no break from defenses. But in this case, it's the offense still throwing the football up big in the fourth quarter. To throw again on second down, Lance. This is Miller, complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. A seven-yard gain on the play. And it's third. And 
Lance going to throw. Flush to his right. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Jalen Rager there to make the grab. And the Texans push further out in front. Extra point up and through. And the lead is now 24. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. And they are most likely staring at a cold end of their season here in this wild card round. Nothing has gone right so far. And they are, to be frank, in desperation mode now as they begin with a first and 10. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Carr again here on second and ten. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. On first down, Carr. Oh, looking for Andrews downfield. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big gain there for the Bills. So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Again, they'll throw with Carr. Throw left side, taken in by Pittman. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. To throw again on second down. Carr escaping the pressure right. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. A great play there. His second touchdown of the night. And the Bills cut into that lead. And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review. And this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. They'll look to throw. He's got it. So they convert the two. That keeps their slim hopes alive as we're back to a two-score game. So two scores down. Time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans hands team recovers. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. like he'll throw here going deep this time for Miller and at the seven yard line the catch is made touchdown Texans 
Scotty Miller saving his best for the playoffs with his third touchdown of the game. And the Texans have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. The try here for the extra point. no good he tugged it wide left and that will keep our score right where it is now he's back out there to boom this one away maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss this is taken way up at the 25. And he'll be set up a good field position here as he gets this up past the 40-yard line. Even after that big-time return, it's not looking great for them today. But if nothing else, even if the miracle doesn't happen, they can turn to this play and say, hey, we can move forward. Maybe it's a building block for the rest of the season. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. Saying their fans here are stunned would be an understatement. Things in this wild card round have not gone according to plan. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Debo Samuel was the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Again, looking for Samuel, this time the catch made. And he'll be down deep into Houston territory. A big game there for the Bills. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. into the red zone. It's Carr. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes knock it away. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. From the gun, it's Carr. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Kenny Moore. And the Texans are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. And that pretty much has been the storyline, Charles. This defense, they seem to be one step ahead from the start of the game until now. And you identified it perfectly, and we can see the frustration that's settling in now. And it's probably been there for a long time, but now it's evident because you can see it in their faces, you can see it in their body language, maybe even a little bit in that play call that ended up maybe closing them out. The Charles on the losing side of things. You know, they didn't come in here as the favorite to these playoffs, but they came in with a lot of hope and anticipation. Tough to have that all snuffed out so quickly. It really is. You're one of 12 teams when the playoffs begin that still has a chance to win the Super Bowl. So that's pretty darn good. And as you often talk about, a lot of hope when the playoffs... Playoffs!